Good morning and good afternoon, ladies and uh, gentlemen. Thank you very much for uh, being here and attending this presentation on the charming properties of, uh, of uh, Rajasthan. So uh, I will be accompanied for this presentation uh, by my colleague Sanjay Sharma, who is uh, our head of operations for, for North India, including uh, Rajasthan, and uh, who will be helping me replying to all your questions and adding some information uh, if required during the presentation. I am myself Jean from the Destination Knowledge Center. So let's start. Uh, before going through the whole list, a uh, few points I wanted to, to speak about. Uh, first, why to speak about charming properties in Rajasthan. Uh, Rajasthan is a part of India which is full of these old treasures uh, hidden in the countryside, uh, in small villages on the banks of, uh, of a river. So uh, it can be medieval fortresses, hunting houses, palace of Maharajas, colonial properties. Um, converted into hotels and proposing a comfort uh, ranging from simple to luxurious, these properties guarantee a unique experience which leave a everlasting souvenir uh, on one's journey in India. And this for many reasons, which I will uh, highlight slightly later on. So today we are, first, we are focusing on Rajasthan because this is probably where you have the biggest concentration of these properties. But India overall as a destination has so many places to provide from the North Himalayans to uh, Kerala in the very south, from Gujarat in the very west to uh, the iconic Kolkata in the very east. So here we are going to speak about charming properties, not obviously about heritage. Uh, this is the opportunity for me to speak about the difference between charming property and a heritage property, because there is sometimes some confusion. Charming properties is a very uh, subjective word which uh, will showcase a small size, mid size property uh, being in, a, in, a, in, a, in the countryside. Uh, with an architecture matching with the architecture of the local area and the tradition. Uh, an heritage place, heritage is a label which has been set up by the government of tourism, uh, which has to uh, re respect some rules. The main one being that the building has to be built before 1950, or at least 50% of the, of the property. Uh, it can be a very charming hotel built as um, uh, as a local uh, architecture of the 17th century, if it was built 10 years back, it cannot be called a heritage place. It, it has to be called a charming, charming property. So the, I think this is important. You, you, you will be able to find some uh, further details on the internet. Uh, I don't have time here now to go too much into the details of this label, but overall in few words to give you uh, some glimpse of how to use this label heritage. So this list won't be only about heritage, it will be also about charming places being quite new. Another point is, what is the advantage to provide these places in an itinerary? These are perfect points to propose to make your uh, traveler breathe and relax in a peaceful environment in between the unavoidable cities such as Jaipur, Jodhpur, Udaipur, which which are, can be a little tiring by uh, its features. So uh, this is the first point. The second point is that these architectural gems not only make you travel back into a time when uh, the Maharajas were ruling Rajasthan, uh, it is an excellent opportunity also for your travelers to have a glimpse of the daily life of a village in the countryside and to discover different customs, different traditions as well, thanks to activities which will highlight the interaction with the locals. Uh, it is also an opportunity to be a part of local social initiatives. By staying in these uh, properties, you must at the time contribute to the social and economic development of the area. Um, they, they ensure that fabrics and other products made by the locals from the, near, from the nearby villages uh, have been used in keeping with the ethos of supporting the local, uh, the local economy. Most of the employees are the offsprings of families who have been working with them for generations sometimes. 
And the last point is that I, I had the chance to uh, visit most of the places we are going to talk about. And what strikes you the more is that there is always a family story behind it. It's not only about old stones, uh, but also about relationship, about meeting people. You meet the owners most of the time. So all of them, I mean, some of them can be more present, others being more discreet. But at least once in your stay, you will meet one of the members of the family which uh, own the place. Then why this hotel selection? So as you may guess, this list is not exhaustive. We had to make some drastic choice. The idea was for us to, sh to showcase all the diversified gems that Rajasthan offers in a frame of an itinerary. So uh, let's start the, the, the trip. So yeah, uh, an idea of the map. Uh, as you can see, we will start from Chekawati, go to Bikaner, and then spend most of our time in this area situated in between Jodhpur, Udaipur, Jaipur, where the number of these properties is, uh, is the largest. So let's start with uh, the baby of this list. Uh, it's a very new product launched uh, at the beginning of 2020 uh, of this year, Johad by Bera Mandawa. So it is the royal family of Mandawa, which revived this uh, living farm, which has been passed down over a generation in the family, which is now headed by Takur Dorga Singhji, who is a very good friend of, uh, of, of uh, Sita uh, TCI. Since he has been running for many years a beautiful boutique heritage hotel in Jaipur. Uh, this place is for animal lovers, it's a living farm. So it's house of four camels, uh, some hens and roosters, cows, of course, uh, some farm dogs. Uh, as far as the situation is concerned, it is situated in the area of Chekawati, so, uh, which is situated in between Delhi and Bikaner. Most of the time, the first uh, stop after, after Delhi in, uh, in an itinerary. More, more precisely, for those who know the area, it is situated 30 minutes north from Nawalgar and one hour south of Mandawa, two very known villages of, uh, of Chikawati. So you have a different kind of accommodation in Johad. You have two suites, four tents, and one uh, exclusive two-story villa, which has a rooftop open air bedroom, so perfect for, uh, for honeymooners. We are here more into a rustic luxury. Uh, as you can see also in this picture with all the visible stones uh, and the whole atmosphere, the beautiness and the rhythm is directly direct, uh, connected with the daily life of the living farm. Um, the property offers guests a chance to experience how folk wisdom and tradition are balanced with modern re refinements. So uh, you have different activities which are directly connected with uh, the, this, uh, this idea of uh, sleeping in a living farm. Just to name a few, to learn how to hand milk cows, uh, to feed and pet the camel and the cows, to try your hand at stone breeding grains, uh, to learn how to make hand churned butter and ghee, so what we like here is to experience rural life in an authentic, intimate, and luxurious settings. Let's continue our trip towards west to reach uh, the area of Bikaner. We are here completely changing our spirit. We are going to travel in time in Gajner Palace, which was built by the Maharaja of Bikaner on the edge of a lake. Uh, so this property was uh, primarily a hunting resort during the days of the British Raj and attracted several dignitaries such as the Prince of Wales in 1905 or Lord Mountbatten when he was Viceroy of, uh, of India. So this large complex uh, was converted into a hotel in 1976. Uh, it can be proposed as a place from where you can visit Bikaner. Bikaner has an interesting story, but it's not a, an extremely appealing city where to spend some time. So it can be a good idea for those who want to breathe to provide Gajner Palace as, uh, um, as the countryside uh, 
uh, accommodation. Uh, it's, as you can see here, it's a large sandstone property built in 6,000 acres, uh, divided into several wings, one of them hosting the 13 historic suites uh, where the British dignitaries used to stay during their alleged trips. And then you have three other wings which host 32 deluxe rooms. Uh, you have also a heritage style restaurants with a terrace overlooking the lake. Um, I, I must say that as far as comfort is concerned, um, it's, it's, there is a, it's a little outdated in the way the comfort and modern amenities are concerned. So I would not say it's obviously for VIP or high-end travelers. I'm not sure it would match. You have another uh, property in Bikaner, which is Narendra Bhavan, which might fulfill a little more the requirements. But the architectural beauty and all the history behind, and of course, the lovely setting, um, make uh, match the, the, the will of most of the, let's say, three star, four stars, mid, uh, mid, -end, uh, mid range travelers. Um, activities, there are some activities such as nature walks, boat rides, of course, sanctuary dinners, and desert safaris. Uh, even if most of the time travelers will stay here only one night after visiting Bikaner and the day after they will leave for Jezalmer. So um, most of the time they don't have too much of the time to uh, attend these, these, uh, these activities. But what we like definitely in this place is the outstanding architectural beauty set on the edge of the lake. So it is a combination of architecture and a peaceful, uh, relaxing place. Let's continue uh, towards the south, uh, more in the Jodhpur area. Let's speak about Fort Kedjarla, which has a deep story. Uh, Fort Kedjarla was built in the early 1611 uh, for the Maharaja for uh, its, his great achievement in war against the Mughals and in honor of his service to the Maharaja of Jodhpur. Uh, the Mughal army rolled in to attack the fort three times. So just to uh, explain you that it is a real piece of, of, uh, of history. Um, this property was leased by a private company who took over the property two years back and which company renovated and restored the place with modern contemporary amenities without compromising the heritage touch. So I must say that it's quite of a success. Uh, as far as the situation is concerned, we are situated one and a half hour drive from Jodhpur towards Jaipur, so more towards the east. So it can be provided either as an in-between stop between Jodhpur and Jaipur or Pushkar, or um, as a place from where you can visit Jodhpur if you provide a two-night stay in this, in this property. So it's a stunning red sandstone monument which is a mesmerizing example of the architecture of the Rajputs. Uh, a section of the fort remained the residence of the royal family. Uh, the other section hosting 39 rooms, among which 12 are uh, suites situated in the fort itself. The other rooms, the, the, the standard rooms, are situated within the Mughals, but in a, in, in, in a new building. Uh, these rooms are comfortable and very charming, even though they don't have this uh, heritage medieval style. Uh, but they have the advantage of being a little more easily accessible who, for those who have difficulty to climb stairs. Uh, there is also a nice pool in the, in the property. Um, activities such as heritage temp, temple walk, jeep safari. What, what we really like here is uh, to sleep within the morals of the 17th century fort and dominating the valley, which is unusual, and uh, make the destination unique in itself. So let's move to a complete different uh, atmosphere, even if it, we are only one and a, uh, we are only 30 minutes far from Fort Kejala, still driving, continuing uh, to, uh, to Jaipur, Ras Chatra Sagar. So there is a very interesting story behind the, the place. In the late 19th century, Takur Chatrat Singh of, Nimal, of Nimaj, a nearby village, uh, was a powerful noble of the desert kingdom of Marwar, which was a former kingdom in the area of Jodhpur. 
decided to dam a seasonal stream flowing through his estate. So his vision was to create a water reservoir which would harvest the mountain rains. So it was an ambitious, uh, it was an ambitious project, of course, and a great drain on his resources, but he remained true to his vision. The dam was completed in 1890 and changed the dry scrub into prime agricultural land. Farmers struggling for sustenance on parched lands were invited by uh, Takur Chatrat Singh to settle around the reservoir. This is why, by the way, it had the name of Chatra Sagar in his memory. And what is interesting here is um, that the farmers and shepherds invited to Chatra Sagar at that time still live a self-contained and harmonious life in the settlements around uh, the place. So this is to show you the the importance of water conservation and harvesting here, which is in the DNA, which has been deeply understood since time uh, immemorial. Uh, so, the, it is situa situated two hours drive from Jodhpur towards Jaipur. It has 16 luxury tents. Uh, just to, to mention quickly that the product, the, 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 the picture that you can see here is one of the uh, former tents what Sanjay uh, told me uh, this morning. So you will have more updated pictures in, uh, in the website. You, you wanted to add something, Sanjay? Yeah, I would like to update uh, on this property too with everyone. So the picture what we are showing, it's a little old one. The new ones were not uh, available with us. So please pardon us. Uh, now, now this, uh, Place Sadrasagan. Now they have 16 rooms, not tents. It is all 16 rooms now they have constructed. And all rooms are structured in a built of a steel frame. All rooms are soundproof and do have an air conditioning. The best part of the rooms are all rooms have a glass open sky view on the ceiling and the interior view which is given it is look like a tent so and uh, the bathrooms which they have constructed have an uh, excellent view of the lake there is a swimming pool also now which is temperature controlled and they have a big very nice restaurant there the earlier entrance of the tent where the front side, now rooms have the entrance from the back side. So the people can always have an, a wide view of the place of the lake. So this is the latest what they have done on their property and now it is managed by RAS. Thank you, Noel. Yeah, yeah thank you Sanjay for this uh, additional information. So yeah, it was, it was it was taken over by RAS, uh, by RAS. So this is why we name it RAS uh, Chatrasaga. Uh, RAS is a small chain of small boutique hotel. Uh, they have Jodhpur RAS, which is said to be one of the most luxurious boutique uh, hotel of, uh, of India. And their signature look is uh, born from the fusion of modern and ancient style. So as um, Sanjay was saying, they have added on some facilities such as heated swimming pool, world-class spa, special private dining options, uh, and outdoor activities. Um, by its situation on the border of the dam, Chatra Sagar has a very diverse bird life around, comprising of, of, the, of over 200 species. So the guests can enjoy bird life from close quarters almost everywhere, uh, everywhere in, the, in the place. Uh, you have nature walks along well-maintained nature trails in the wilderness. So what we like here is the way luxury here meets refinement, uh, meets with refinement and environmental protection. Slightly more into the south, close by uh, Udaipur, more close by Udaipur, we have this very nice uh, Rolet Chateau uh, product, Devstri. Uh, which has an interesting story also behind. Devshui is in fact the little sister of Deogar Mahal, which is a very famous heritage hotel. 
present in the touristic map for years and even even uh, now in between Udaipur and Jaipur. Devshri is only 15 minutes walking distance from uh, Deogar Mahal. And it is uh, Chatrun Jet Singh Chundawa from the Deogar family, who decided a few years ago uh, to rebuild the heritage by the way of a home for his family. So you will see many influences of Mewar heritage architecture and some element of inspiration of the charming Bagor Ki Haveli at Udaipur. Uh, it took two years for Devshri to, to get out of the ground and opens its door in 2015. Uh, the Deogar family was very, very serious player in the Mewar aristocracy. They were Ravat of Deogar, which is uh, a local title equivalent to Raj, Raja, which is king. And they once ruled, uh, ruled over the fourth largest land in, in the whole Rajasthan. So, um, it is situated two hours north, north from Udaipur, so can be perfectly proposed in between Udaipur and Jaipur, or in between Udaipur and Pushkar. Um, as you could see in the previous picture, it has been built in the traditional Rajasthan architecture with Nimbahera stone, uh, which is a kind of limestone which you can find close by in the Chittorgar district. So you have around seven, seven rooms, which has uh, a very exquisite decoration very uh, very refined uh, and everything here invites to relaxation sitting on the veranda with the lounge stretching out to the shore of the lake definitely infuse um, a sense of calm um, as far as activities are concerned there, there are two of them that i wanted to highlight it is uh, the first one is the artisan walk in the village of the Oga. i must say that uh, you have many villages where i mean most of these properties are built in the heart of on the on the step of uh, small villages and the one of Deogar is has definitely a different spirit mm, people don't um, of course they are quite amazed to see to see tourists but they won't bother you there, there will be a, a very fair uh, transparent relationship so this tour uh, give you the, the opportunity to explore the arts of craft the arts of crafts of the, of the village folk, where you can try your hand at the potter's wheel, you can discuss with the flag, flag maker, you can have a chai with the lady with the henna, henna cones, uh, and ending the main street where you will see all locals going about their daily business. So this is a real dive into the, into the village. And there is also a rural rail. Um, the property offers a train ride, which is a real experience to traverse down the Aravelli Hill section, the very small local train. So you will be accompanied by a guide who will purchase the tickets, the tickets for you. And then you will be seated on one of these wooden seats along with the locals we, who can be uh, in a wedding party, can be pilgrims, daily travelers. Um, so overall, what we like in this place is the peaceful end uh, of this, and the calm of the property situated alongside uh, the lake. It's an ideal spot where to relax and, and read a book. Um, let's speak now about uh, a 300 year old fort palace located, located in the heart of a very little village which is uh, situated in between Jodhpur and Ranakpur, Udaipur. Uh, which which place was once a stay for the Maharaja in his uh, in his travels? Uh, we could almost call Chanudgar a homestay fort. Uh, you are so warmly welcomed by the owners, Mr. Singh and uh, his wife and his whole family. Um, you 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 are uh, proposed to participate to the daily activities. For instance, when I was uh, spending some time there. At the end of the day, you are even invited to participate to the Arti ceremony, which is the daily fire ceremony in the family temples, which is in one of the wings of the, of the property. Um, the property in itself, as I was saying, is situated in between Jodhpur and Ranakpur, so it can be easily placed uh, as a relaxing place if you want to avoid the long road between the between Jodhpur and Udaipur, if you want to avoid your 
travelers to sleep in the hotels in, in Ranakpur and Kumbalgar, which are a little more, uh, I mean, order is exaggerated, but a little more frequented by the, by the tourists. Uh, this place has a blend of mewar, marwar, and raj, a weir architecture. It has 10 expansive suites, all furnished with charming, antique, and contemporary furniture, a few of them being inspired by the architecture of the Victorian weir. All rooms have and suite facilities and, and a private lounge weir. Uh, maybe what is my uh, most favorite zone of this place is the Moti Mahal, which is a dining hall, um, which is definitely one of the most stunning rooms in the Gare. It has, it retains uh, the original paintwork which was done by hand using, using vegetable dyes. The, the, the homemade food is uh, outstanding, uh, presided by the Kumari of Chanud, um, Takurani Sai Ba Maruda, uh, which makes food which is inspired by Rajasthani, Marwari, Central Indian cuisine. So you are in the very heart of the countryside of Rajasthan and hosted by an extremely gentle family. Many activities, jeep safaris, heritage walks, village walks, celebrate festivals such as uh, Diwali, Holi. They will invite you to, to dress and to participate to the, family, uh, to the family event. So what we really like here is the authentic Rajput hospitality in a heritage family homestead. Uh, a little less in between Jodhpur and Udaipur, it's a slightly detour, but which is definitely well worth. Uh, we are now uh, diving into the beautiful, colorful, and highly individual home of the noble family of Benjvara. So uh, this Rabla, uh, Rabla, which means castle, was built about 240 years ago in a typical Rajput, Rajput style by the founder of Benjvara. Uh, after which each subsequent ruler changed uh, the place according to his own taste. Uh, the last generation has added many modern comforts and the place was transformed into a heritage hotel in 1993. Um, yeah, as far as the family is concerned, they are extremely welcoming as well. I remember myself being uh, hosted by uh, the nephew of the owner, when I was telling you at the very beginning that you are not obviously owned, uh, hosted by the owner himself, but one of the member can be one of the member of the family. Uh, so here it was the nephew who made his best make my stay memorable one, memorable one. And this is definitely what, along with the food and the architecture, one of my best souvenirs of the place. So they have, um, two categories of rooms, and here it's important to mention it because they have uh, the, the suites, which are situated in the heritage part, very spacious, each one having its own color with AC and, uh, you know, modern facilities, and the rooms, which are much more simple, deluxe room, which, which are smaller, and most of them being placed in a part of the property which is not heritage. So, the, the, the wing has been built in respect to the heritage architecture, but it is, it is quite of the, it was made recently. So this I thought was important to mention. Uh, as far as activities are concerned, one of them being the wildlife safari, because here you have a specific community living uh, close by uh, the, the, the village, which is called Badari. Uh, it makes the place different because these people have their own way of dressing, uh, their own way of living with specific traditions which are explained by the members of the family. Um, so what we like here is um, the very warm personalized welcome and, and the homemade food which is uh, definitely stunning here. Let's move to a completely different uh, product and a wear. Uh, the Jawai Leopard Camp by Sujan. So let me first introduce you to Sujan to uh, understand the whole spirit and concept of this place. Sujan is uh, a family company which finds its origin uh, at the end of the 19th century. So a company diversified into multiple range of activities such as trading, business in oil, cotton, real estate. 
uh, under the edges of Mr. Sujan Singh and Soba Singh. 46 years ago, the family fell in love with the Rantambor Tiger Reserve and progressively got the passion for wildlife with one of the members of the family, whose name is Jaisal Singh, who Jaisal Singh spent his childhood in the jungle. So he committed his life to wildlife and conservation and building on his grandfather's legacy, built Sherbag, which is situated in the periphery of what is now Rantambor Tiger Reserve. So within one year, Sherbag was listed among the top 100 hotels in the world, uh, awarded for the best overseas tourism project uh, to award eco-friendly uh, property. And uh, from a personal perspective, he got married with Anjali, who is an accomplished artist and entrepreneur. So he wedded his passion for wildlife with uh, Anjali's fine aesthetic sense and creativity. So uh, nowadays, Sujan is a collection of four unique lifestyles, such as three tented camps and one royal palace in, in uh, Rajasthan. So just this, just to explain you uh, a little uh, the DNA of, of Sujan. Then Jawai, which is not a very famous place. Uh, it's a small village named after the river of the same name, which is known for its sanctuaries for leopards, birds, and crocodiles. So uh, the Jawai leopard camp in itself is situated, is situated in between Jodhpur and Daipur. So it's a tonight uh, destination. Uh, which provides 10 tents, including family and uh, royal suites. Um, the family tented suites are spacious, two double bedroom connect connecting suites tucked away in a quiet corner of the camp. So it's perfect for families wanting that extra bit of privacy and space. Uh, the suites comes with its own private dining area. It's, it's, it's a high-end, definitely a high-end uh, product. And you have also the Royal Tented Suite, which is the latest addition, uh, with exclusive privacy, private heated swimming pool, own private butler. Um, it's, it's definitely a unique product. As far as activities are concerned, the main one amongst some others, of course, is uh, the wilderness drives. So you are invited for a very early morning uh, safaris in one of their customized 4x4 jeeps uh, with a private guide on board. So it's, it's, uh, it's an experience to discover new areas, new areas, new animals. And what we like here is the combination, the, the combination with subtle opulence with abundant adventure. This is a new, we, we, might, we can say a new destination. Uh, more south in the in Rajasthan, uh, we are reaching here uh, Daryabad, which is uh, off the beaten track destination, which has a lot to offer. There is nature, there is religion, wildlife, travel festival, along with heritage properties. So there is plenty to do here. Uh, Fort Daryabad is a heritage hotel built in the 16th century. Um, which is hidden at the end of the, of the small city of Daryabad after crossing many narrow streets and after what looks to be a dead end, you all of a sudden reach this 300 years old property of the, of the royal family. So uh, the place still retains its illustrious heritage. Though uh, a little refreshment would not be a luxury, um, the ambience is set. And once you take the first step and uh, go inside, you travel back in time, definitely. It is situated two hours south of Udaipur. So it has an unusual but interesting situation. It can be provided in three different ways. Uh, in the frame of a Rajasthan tour, in between Udaipur and Dundi, it's a detour, but the activities provided there uh, make this detour well worth. It can be provided as well uh, with a Madhya Pradesh itinerary because uh, Daryabad is only four and a half hours far from Mandu. So you can connect Rajasthan with Madhya Pradesh with a tour uh, starting in Delhi and ending in Bhopal, passing through Rajasthan and Madhya Pradesh. You can uh, provide it as well in the frame of a Rajasthan Gujarat 
uh, combined tour. Ahmedabad is only five and, a, five and a half hours drive from Dhanabad, and Dungar, Dungarpur only a two and a half hours drive. So the, the, the situation here is extremely interesting. As far as the property is concerned, uh, you have 13 rooms, which offer simple comfort uh, and do not provide modern activities. So it's not for, definitely not for high-end travelers. Um, it can be for mid-range travelers as long as they are informed in advance about the level of comfort uh, and those who are interested in all the activities uh, provided by, by the place. Um, they, they are provided with antique furniture, of course, with uh, thick carpets, alcoves, so the, the, the atmosphere is definitely charming. As far as activities are concerned, so whenever you reach the place, you are uh, invited to uh, a high tea in the hills. Uh, we are in the very south of Rajasthan. This part of the, of, the, uh, of the region is very hilly and green and is far from the dry environment that we are used to whenever we think about uh, Rajasthan. So at around 5 p.m. you are dropped on the top of a hill with tea, coffee, biscuits and enjoy the sunset. Then uh, while driving back to the property, uh, you are proposed to stop in front of the entrance of the sanctuary of Sitamata to attend, uh, to see the, 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 the nest of few of what we call giant flying squirrel, uh, which is the specialty of the area. There are 44 of them, and it is the only place in North India where you can see them. So every day at dusk, you will see one or more of these uh, squirrels taking his first flight of the evening to take, to take a breakfast. It's quite unusual, very interesting. And uh, you have also the travel village walk. Um, there are several travel villages uh, across Rajasthan. Uh, the one of Daryabad being one of those uh, retaining the more their authenticity. So you can witness the way of life of the bills. And what is interesting here is that every year in the month of February, you have the Baneshwar Fair, during which the bills will perform ritual ceremonies and take a holy dip in the river amongst so many other tribes of the region which would have come specifically for this uh, for this fair so uh, if you have if you stay here for two nights then you will have time to do a jeep safari in the sitamata sanctuary do a horse safari lunch at uh, lunch at the jungle so what what we like here is definitely the crossroads location in the south of Rajasthan and the activities provided of a very various interest. Let's come back um, in between Udaipur and Gundi for what is, I mean, definitely one of the most striking and outstanding places of, of Rajasthan in Fort Begu. This is an impressive 15th century fort. Uh, converted into a hotel in 2010. Begu was offered uh, to the Crown Prince of Mewar in 1430. Uh, and at one point, Begu comprised of 500 revenue village. It was one of the oldest thief land and earned the highest revenue uh, amongst all the lands in uh, the former kingdom of, of, of Mewar. Everything here is about uh, extreme. The property is built over an area of 30 acres, so remarkably wide moat encircling it. Uh, strengthened by a double wall structure, there are 18 bastions around the fort, eight huge gates, half a dozen of elephant stables, stepwells, temples, havelis. Um, all the, the slot marks of cannon attacks on the four walls and bastions of the fort bear testimony to uh, the history and the heroic behavior of its rulers who put up a stiff resistance to invading Mughal and Maratha force, forces. This is to explain you that we are in a real piece of history. Uh, Fort Begu is situated in between Udaipur to Bundi. It's a three and a half hours driving distance from Udaipur. It provides uh, five, three suites and two deluxe rooms situated on the top of the structure 
the deluxe rooms are comfortable enough, but size is very, very small. So this is better to, better to inform your, uh, your travelers. Uh, even if each of them have a private terrace or a veranda, the suites being situated on the topmost floor of the palace. Here, there are no television. Wi-Fi is sometimes working in the, in the dining, dining room. So you are definitely out of, uh, of the civilization. As far as activities are concerned, I would say that the visit of the fort is in itself an activity which takes the whole day, 30 acres fort, <laughs> including temples. Uh, you can also do some work or drive to the family cenotaphs, bird watching. So what we like here is definitely the fort in itself and the feeling that time stood still in the 15th century. One of Begu's cousin is uh, the Benzhorgar Fort, which is uh, smaller in size, but not less impressive. It shares the same kind of, uh, of spirits. It's a majestic fort uh, built on the 18th uh, century, uh, 18th, cent uh, 18th century uh, in 1741, uh, situated upright and having panoramic view on the river and the surrounding hills. So the, the, the environment as well is set. Uh, Belfogar Fort was a fortified outpost of the Kingdom of Mewar. The royal family still lives uh, in, uh, in the place, uh, which is only, which is close by Fort Begu. Fort Begu was three and a half hours far from Udaipur towards uh, Bundi. Belfogar Fort is five hours from Udaipur towards Bundi. It has eight rooms uh, divided in two categories. Um, they are all uh, situated in the building, of course, which uh, surrounds a nice courtyard with an open area. Uh, the rooms have antique furniture and nice bathrooms. Uh, some of them will have, uh, the, some suites will have river view, some others no, but having a better view to enjoy the sunset, even though the best view to enjoy the sunset here is the rooftop which is set up with some tables for the dinner during, written, during uh, winter times, or if you want to have a drinks. And where you can make the most of this unique panoramic view on both the river and the sunset in, uh, in the late, uh, late evening. Uh, amongst the activities provided here, uh, there is the river cruise activities. So you are uh, invited to do boating on the river in a, in a country boat for about one, one and a half hour, uh, which river cruise is provided early morning or in the evening uh, when there is more bird activity. Uh, you can see some muggers, which are kind of crocodiles, which can be seen basking uh, in the sun. And it is the opportunity also to see the place from, uh, from another, to see the fort from another perspective. So you are served tea, coffee on board, so it's a comfortable uh, cruise. You, you have also cooking demonstration, of course, at the property. Um, so what we like here the more is the astonished environment on the bank of the river. And Mr. Hemandra Singh as the host who lives in the fort and who is definitely very present in hosting each and everybody, which definitely makes the difference. And, and most of the time, uh, conducting the activities as well. We are uh, coming back towards Jaipur to uh, meet a completely different uh, property, uh, Shapura Bag, which was built in 1895 uh, in a colonial architectural uh, style, which is uh, quite different compared with all the other properties that we have uh, been through. So Shapurabag were the residence of the rulers of Shapura, which, which rulers are today a uh, very gentle family uh, consisting of the prison Raja and his uh, family. And I must say that um, I think this is one of the most welcoming and gentle family uh, that I met in all uh, these charming heritage properties that um, I, I, uh, I discovered. Uh, just one concrete example to show you the niceness and the generosity of this family. 
in the early uh, in the early 20th century, Rajadiraj Nahar Singh of, Char of Shapura mortgaged the family's private property and jewels to bring water to his people of the village. So today, the lakes he created uh, form the heart of a verdant wetland refuge, which is a nice, I mean, idyllic setting where man and nature have come to understand each other. So I thought it was an important uh, story to tell because behind every property there is a family which is maybe as important as the property itself. So I, I really wanted to focus on, uh, on, the, on that point. Uh, the, the property in itself is exactly situated in between Jaipur and, and Udaipur. Uh, it's a high-end property, definitely. There are uh, now six rooms in the main in the main building, then three, four rooms in the other buildings. All of them offering a very high level of comfort, um, of uh, some level of refinement in the decoration, whatever it is in the suite, whether it is in the corridors or in the main hall. Uh, the temperature controlled pool, which went live uh, four or five uh, years back, is definitely as well one of the most beautiful one I, I experienced with two comfortable sitting areas in the corners, surrounded by the forest. Uh, I come back to the pictures to show it to you. Uh, th there are three blocks in total. There is also the dining room, the dining hall, which is uh, in the continuity in terms of refinement. The staff is very professional, friendly, smiley. The food is, of course, homemade style. So it's, it's definitely a property that you can promote blindly to your VIP uh, Travelers, definitely. Uh, as far as activities are concerned, bird watching, uh, excursion to the Dicola Fort, which is one of the very latest activities launched. Uh, it's, it's a newly created private sit out for couple and honeymooners, which has been set up in the Fort Dicola, which is very around the property and offering stunning views in a very intimate setting. You can also take a walk in with the in-house naturalists for private bird watching walks and expeditions within and beyond the estate and a uh, last point uh, as well about uh, Shapura Bag is that sustainability and social responsibility uh, lies at the cause of their uh, ethos. They have integrated Shapura's uh, hospitality with local communities in the area so um, one of the consequences is that, for instance, not a single guest is asked for arms uh, whenever they walk through the, the village or asking to, to buy anything as they explore the market. So uh, every guest stays contribute to the Darshan Rao Beo Trust, which founds a variety of activities in the region, such as women healthcare, rainwater harvesting, children's education, and many other activities. So what we like here is how uh, luxury heritage is combined with family atmosphere in old colonial architecture. Let's move now to uh, with, uh, a property which is most probably the most famous one and which is certainly the idyllic representation of what is a Maharaja Palace in every tourist uh, mind. So, uh, Samad Palace, which was initially built in the 16th century as a Rajput fort, uh, but in the early 19th century, uh, under a uh, nobleman, it was converted from a fort into an exquisitely designed palace in Rajput and Muslim architectural style. So Samad Palace is now a part of a heritage group of hotels under the flagship name of Samad, and uh, which is run by the hereditary owners of these structures. Uh, Samad Aveli being one of them, built by the same family more than 150 years ago, situated in the very heart of Jaipur. Uh, you have also Samad Bag or Samad Garden, which was landscaped more than 150 years ago also by one of the sons of the Maharaja of, uh, of, of Jaipur. And the fourth place, which is in uh, Bondagar uh, Tiger Reserve, um, Samad Safari Lodge. So Samad Palace is situated 
45 minutes north of Jaipur. So there are several ways of providing this place. It can be provided uh, as a nice uh, place from where you can visit Jaipur because 45 minutes is not that long. And uh, as you could see, the setting is so wow that it is well worth doing the 45 minutes distance. But for those travelers who uh, don't want to do that extra bit of, of mileage, it can be provided as a stop um, before reaching Delhi uh, or before reaching Agra because Agra is, I mean, 99% of the time included in the itinerary, even if geographically speaking, it's not towards the east, it's more towards the north. But the detour in itself is completely well worth when you see the kind of property that it proposes. It's a 40, it's a 475 year old palace, which is an amazing example of Indo Saracenic architecture. So we don't see it every day. Um, the place is built of sandstone at the foot of the Aravelli range of hills with a fortress like uh, setting. So the interiors of the palace is composed in the ancient architectural style of Rajasthan with uh, marble floors, ornamented pillars, mosaic walls, luxurious carpets, uh, decorated with old wall paintings, as you can see in this, in this beautiful picture. Each of their uh, 42 rooms is very ele elegantly and luxuriously furnished and having its own uh, unique personality. So as far as activities are concerned, the property visit, uh, of course, Mughal Garden visit at Samad Bag, uh, village walk. Uh, so what we like, what we love here is maybe what we could uh, call the Samad touch, apart from this amazing architectural uh, property. The fact that it appears more or less unchanged over the course of its 400 life, 400 year life. But yet in, as a luxury hotel, even the modern additions stick to the extravagant style of the, uh, of the original. So let's say that it is a capacity to melt old and new together in a, in a all refined way. Uh, last gems of our list, again, a complete different uh, spirit. So um, this is for those willing to get lost somewhere, to be in a place where nobody from your, uh, from your in-laws can reach you, uh, for, the, for those being close to a burnout. It, can, it is also for those willing to, um, uh, to have exclusivity, privacy, and comfort in a countryside environment. So we are speaking here about Anupura Resort, which is definitely a hidden gem. Um, it's situated one and a half hours from Jaipur, but several dozen kilometers away from the highway, uh, 10 minutes on a remote path. And Opera Resort is really hidden from the world. <clears throat> it can be proposed uh, from Jaipur towards Delhi or Agra, either way. Uh, it's, as I was saying, only one and a half hour far from, uh, from Jaipur, so too far maybe to be proposed as a uh, as a place from where you can visit Jaipur. Uh, it is a small collection of cottages, cottages, courtyards, of private pools. You have uh, butlers. So this is the charm of, of Anupura, where every need is perfectly anticipated. Uh, Anupura is designed, conceptualized, to ensure beautiful and entirely private indoor and outdoor spaces for everyone. Uh, the property hosts five rooms segregated in two different areas with each area having its own swimming pool, common courtyard, and even dining area. So this is to preserve the intimacy of the place and to customize as much as possible uh, uh, the guest needs. So from an architectural uh, perspective, it has been created to resemble as a Dani, which are local huts of Rajasthan, made in uh, made in mud so the architecture of these bungalows integrate perfectly with uh, the natural environment so the comfort is um, is not it's not luxurious it's not simple um, it's for sure of a very good quality and tasteful in the bathroom are made with slate tiles on the walls marble sink 
it's, it's not about flashiness and the way the rooms are set uh, come from this. And apart from the product in itself, what makes the success of this, of, this, uh, uh, of this place is the staff. Uh, seven members of the staff which take care of the guests and headed by Ishvar. <clears throat> All of them are definitely up uh, to the future of the property. They are simple, discreet, refined, Smiley, they know exactly how to host, how to handle a conversation without being intrusive. It's a perfect blend. So activities, blend work, leopard watching, nature work. Uh, you can take a tour of their organic farm uh, and have an afternoon tea in their uh, planted lemon groves. You can learn about the plant cycles and marigold also, which are grown on their farm. So, yeah, to sum up, what we really like in this place is exclusivity and simplicity. So, this is the end of this unique list. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. Now, uh, let's take some time to uh, answer all your, uh, all your questions. <clears throat>